Hey guys, this is Zax Blobs, and I'm sorry I've been gone for quite a while, and I'm back with a video on what Zack is inherently good at and what Zack is inherently bad at. So uh, the gameplay behind me has nothing to do with the topic itself. Um, if it happens to, then it's an accident. Um, so, But anyway, today I'm going to talk about the innate strengths and weaknesses of Zack as a champion. For the most part, these strengths and weaknesses will be inherent to Zack, regardless of how good you are at the champion, with very few exceptions. So if he's bad at something, he's going to be bad at it, regardless of if you are challenger top two. Doesn't matter. Zack will be the same. So jumping right into it, um, Zack is very weak at dueling. He's not a good early game duelist. That's just something he's bad at. Uh, number two anti-healing items or ignite. If you get uh, Merlinomicon against Zack or you ignite him, he's, it's just going to be a lot harder to, to tank for your team. So Merlinomicon is always a good buy against Zack if you can uh, justify it. Uh, he's not the best early skirmisher. Um, so like early skirmishes bot lane, uh, 3v3s, he's not the best because of high cooldowns and uh, his percent damage on his W is very... Uh, low rank at this point, so it's not going to be doing a whole lot of damage to targets that don't have a lot of health. Um, he's also very defined to do a specific thing by his kit. Uh, when Zack came out, he was designed to initiate. That's just how Zack is. He's good at initiating. He's not extremely good at many other things, but he is good at initiating, so pick him if you need that. Um, he does not do insane burst damage if he's fed. He's very, this means that he's very reliant on his teammates to help him kill things, uh, which is why I think not a lot of people like to play him, because a lot of people like to be self-reliant um, to win the game, which just isn't going to happen with Zack. That's not how it works. Um, and then next, uh, six, uh, the item paths on Zack are somewhat inflexible, no pun intended. Uh, Zack can't really build many mana items because it would be inefficient on him. So it just limits a lot of his items. He's kind of stuck with uh, Randuin, Spirit Visage, Warmogs, um, maybe Righteous Glory if you get lucky. Or you really need it. But yeah, there's not a lot of mana items that you can buy. So uh, let's see here. Uh, he's weak against certain champions. Uh, he doesn't. Zack is a champion that doesn't have a whole lot of bad matchups uh, because he has healing and uh, an escape and a revive passive, so he's a pretty safe champion overall. Overall, but he does have some bad matchups. Uh, I'm not going to name all of them, but some of the bad matchups that I've come up against include uh, Thresh because he can either hook and or flay you out of uh, slingshot in midair. Uh, Janna, same thing. Uh, just disengages really, really hard, which is... That, that's all Zack does, is engage. So if you can disengage, then, well, you're pretty screwed. Uh, Lee Sin for the first 10 minutes, but uh, Lee Sin pretty much counters everybody for the first 10 minutes, so that's nothing special. Uh, Alistar, for as another support, uh, can headbutt you or pulverize you out of your slingshot animations. Very annoying if you play against a good Alistar. Um, Vayne. Vayne is just... If, if you're able to kill Vayne, then it was the Vayne's fault. Like, there's no reason you should ever be able to kill Vayne. Um, speaking of which... <laughs> whoops. Well, either way, uh, Vayne's very good at dodging uh, your slingshot. Like, if you get hit... If she hits... If she gets hit by your slingshot, it's just... It's over. But that should never happen, because uh, Vayne can easily... Easily just dodge it with tumble, and then she can also uh, condemn you out of midair. So there's that. And then uh, Callista, almost same thing. You can easily uh, have your slingshot dodged by her stupid passive, and then uh, she also has the percent health damage thing on her uh, passive. I think it is. So that's really annoying. And then also uh, rend can be stacked up really, really hard. Uh, Sivir is the last really bad matchup, and it's because, I don't know if they fixed this yet, but uh, there was a problem with her spell shield where it blocks two spells at once, so if you slingshot on top of her and then immediately use unstable matter, it blocks both of them, so she's the only champion where I can't, I can't press both of the buttons at the same time, I have to wait like a second afterwards so that her spell shield doesn't block both of them. It's very annoying, 
Um, and then she still gets to block your slingshot, so it's uh, it's pretty obnoxious. Uh, things that make Zack strong. Uh, Zack is a safe safe champion, like I said before. He doesn't have a whole lot of bad matchups. Um, you can pick him into just about anything. Uh, you can just like first pick, blind pick Zack, and you'll most of the time you'll be fine. I failed that. <laughs> um, he scales very well. Um, Zack is a tank, and therefore he's, he scales pretty well into the late game. He has some really, really, really spammable um, percent damage, uh, which makes him great against late game team fights when everyone has a ton of health. And uh, you can just sit there and AoE down everybody, and all of your spells are AoE, so there you go. Uh, all of your abilities are always useful no matter how fed you are, or how not fed you are. If you land them. So Zack is always going to be useful if he lands Slingshot and Ult. He's just always going to be useful. That's how it is. Because people can't hurt you if they're CC'd. Like, it doesn't matter if you're O20. As long as you land both of your skills, they can't hurt you during that time. And it gives your time, uh, your team some time to uh, do damage to them. Uh, Zack has a mid-game power spike. Uh, he's an AP champ. Even though he's a tank, all of his abilities do scale off of... Uh, magic damage, so as soon as he gets those abilities leveled up, he's going to start to do some amount of damage, uh, regardless of what you're building. It's just how AP champions work, so there you go. Um, and the cooldown on your slingshot gets really low during this time, too, and it has like a 280 damage base, so that's, that's a really high base damage. And it's AoE, so. Uh, Zack is also an easy champion to pick up, uh, he's easy to learn, hard to master, I like to say. And uh, he's easy to learn because at the core of it, you can basically just land Slingshot and land ult and you'll be fine. At the highest level, uh, you will do that and then immediately be picking up every single blob in the fight. And you will live for three times as long as you would have at the base level. But you can still do it no matter what. Like, you don't have to be a master at Zack to play Zack. You can... Just you can scoot by just landing your skills and be fine. Um, he has no mana to manage, so that's a good thing. You can spam as much as you want in the jungle and not worry about running out of mana or conserving mana. You can just focus on what you need to focus without um, without burning through mana and running out of resources. And then you'll always be having enough health as long as you're picking up your blobs during the jungle camp, so no problem there. Uh, I would say he's arguably the tankiest champion in the game, including uh, blobs, because you just like at, during the late game you're getting, as you see right now, 200 health back per blob that you pick up, and if you land slingshot on four people, that's 800 health that you can get right off the bat, um, without using any of your other abilities. So he's it, just extremely tanky. Obviously, uh, you know, Nasus, Maokai. Other people are extremely tanky as well, but you could argue that Zack is one of the tankiest champions in the game. Uh, number eight is Wombo Combo and Team Fight Potential. Zack is one of the most notorious Wombo Combo champions because all of his skills are AoE and he has two knockups. Everything on his kit just looks cool when you use it all uh, together, so it's really good for team fighting and stuff like that. Not because it looks cool, but because they're all AoE and lots of CC and stuff like that. Um, he's also a very easy version of Lee Sin late game. So what I mean by that is uh, you can jump behind the AD carry and bounce them into your team, thereby doing an insect play without being Lee Sin. And you're much more useful than Lee Sin later. So that's, I guess that's why I hate Lee Sin so much, is because Zach to me, seems like an easier, more fun version of Lee Sin that actually scales but I suppose that's just my opinion. Um, and then, lastly, I'm going to do champions that Zack is strong with, or team comps that Zack is strong with. So, uh, not all of them, but some of them include uh, Lulu to help with initiation potential. As soon as Zack jumps in, Lulu can ult, and that's like triple knockup potential if Zack lands all of his skills and Lulu uses ult. It's just a ton of CC. And then Zack is huge after that. Um, Orianna. Orianna is a pretty obvious one. Uh, if you play it correctly, Wombo Combo, 5-man, 
just instigate everybody. And then Nar, after that, Nar is a really good one. Uh, I've noticed if, if Nar can get a good ult or Zack can get a good ult, doesn't matter which one goes first. Usually it, it seems to me that it's easier for Nar to go first and get the ult against the wall. But either way, uh, two really tanky champions, you can have a really strong front line. Um, and and then you'll you'll just be able to crush team fights at that point if if you play it correctly. And then uh, Yasuo Yasuo is also a really big one. Uh, obviously, because you can just like wombo combo everybody, knock everybody up at the same time, and Yasuo can follow up no problem. And then afterwards, you can split them all up with Zackal. So Yasuo has easy pickings for uh, stragglers on the outside of the fight. So that's a good combo as well. Wukong. Uh, Wukong I actually uh, thought about pretty recently, and uh, it was a lot of fun. I, I played a game with a Wukong main, and we had quite <laughs> some good times because uh, we were able to wombo combo a couple times and get all the knockups, all the damage. Wukong has plenty of damage um, and the AoE knockup, and it just it just works well. I don't know what to say. And then uh, lastly, Leona is also a good one, uh, just because she can freeze everybody for that uh, one second or so that her ult does. And then when you put Zac on top of that, it actually does a ton of damage because of the Leona passive. And if you can proc everything at once, and then Leona can Zenith Blade on top of that and hit everybody, and then it's another proc. And Zac is standing in the middle with the Sunfire K passive, so it instantly procs um, any Leona passive, because I believe Sunfire Cape procs Lion a passive, which is an uh, interesting interaction. But yeah, that's pretty much all I said. Oh, and uh, you can teleport to Zack's blobs, so no problem there. Like, you don't even have to drop a ward during a team fight for your uh, top laner. You can easily just teleport onto Zack and be right in the middle of the team fight as well. So there's that. And I think that's all I had to say for today. So this is just a quick video um, on what Zack is good and bad at inherently. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and I, all ho I hope you all have a wonderful day today, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.